Welcome to the Homeschool Show for North Carolinians for Home Education. Our goal is to help you homeschool with confidence and joy. I'm your host, Matthew McDill, and we have a great uh, show set up for you today. We're going to start off with some homeschool news. We're going to ask this question, do homeschoolers qualify for the Opportunity Scholarship? Uh, We're going to give a special uh, shout out to homeschool dads. We have a chess a demo lesson that's free, a chess workshop that you might want to sign up for. So uh, we're going to check that out. Then we're going to have a conversation uh, with T.S. and Smack. T.S. and I talked about uh, some great things last week, including um, how do we balance flexibility and structure in our homeschool and how do we help our kids find those things that they're really interested in? So looking forward to that conversation. We're going to have a little wisdom from the word, and we're going to talk about love right off the heels of Valentine's Day. And finally, for um, Homeschool Helps with Amanda, Amanda's going to talk about the winter slump. Are you in a winter slump, and what can you do about it? So jumping into the homeschool news, I'm going to start off with this big question that a lot of people are asking. Do homeschoolers qualify for the Opportunity Scholarships? And I'm going to jump right to the end and say no. Homeschoolers do not qualify for the Opportunity Scholarships. So any student in North Carolina can use the Opportunity Scholarship to help pay his tuition and fees in a state-approved private school. Uh, By their very nature, homeschools can't meet the state requirements to be approved to receive funding from the Opportunity Scholarship Program. We don't comply with Part 1 or Part 2 of Article 39, of chapter uh, 115C of the general statute. So if you want to look it up and find out for sure, um, this is going to establish it for you. Homeschool regulations are spelled out in chapter 115C, article 39, part three. So that was a statement from our uh, law and policy director, Spencer Mason. I hope that's helpful and we'll clear that up for you. Uh, Another thing I want to do is let you know that we have set up a page, especially for homeschool dads. And on that page, Uh, there is a survey. And so we want to connect homeschool dads. We want to support you, whether maybe you're the primary uh, educator or you're the support uh, person. Um, We want to hear from you. We want to connect with you. We want to support you. And so you can go to nche.com slash dads. And if you would fill out that survey, we will be able to get you on our dads list and we will be able to get some more information about you and how we can serve you. That'll be great. Also in news, I want to let you know about a free chess workshop. We've been uh, offering this just about every semester now. Stephen Bloom is a chess player and teacher in Canada, and uh, he's off working with us to help us offer this free workshop for beginners. Um, also, you're going to be given, though, a really great discount on his courses if you are a member of NCHE. So if you want to get ahead of that, you can go to nche.com slash join and find out what it means to be a member. But for sure, go to nche.com slash chess workshop and sign up for this free, uh, free workshop. Finally, I just want to remind you that next week, February 29th, is the last day for the early bird pricing for the Thrive Homeschool Conference. The conference is coming up May 23rd through the 25th. And uh, you can go to nchg.com slash thrive and find out all the information about it. But if you're interested in going or you know you're going to go, you need to go ahead and register while you can get um, a much better price. Okay, so now we're going to go into homeschool conversations. And again, I want us to uh, take a look at this conversation that T.S. and I had as we're just talking about things that we've been learning. And one of the things we discussed is the balance between having a really a good schedule and a plan and being flexible. Um, And also, how do we help our kids find those things that they're um, interested in? Why is that important? So let's check this out. Yeah, so I don't know if you remember the conversation we had at the beginning of the year when we were talking about um, just that grapple of like letting God lead and having that flexibility, but also having a plan and structure. And so that has always been like a reoccurring theme every year where I'm always trying to get it all in and figure it all out. And my brain works and planned, like, give me a day. Let me kind of know. Um, either way. So I've been wrestling that kind of all these years. And this year I'm like, all right, Lord, like 
I hear you telling me to let it go. I want to trust you with that. And so maybe our first couple of weeks, I, we just kind of got up and just kind of saw what the flow looked like naturally. Um, and we kind of moved and flowed and everything felt good. I, I have simplified so much and let go of so much um, that surprisingly has allowed for more to be done in a weird way. Um, and I think that's why for the first time we were able to get back to it because for the first year, we're not fully exhausted and like, oh my God, like I don't even want to go back to getting school in. So this year has been great. Um, it's been very chill, but we've been doing it more consistently, um, more joyfully. So this has been my favorite year so far. And even my little kids, they'll be like, oh, we're not doing school today. Like on the weekend, they want to do it because it's turned more into us just kind of spending these intentional times together where, oh, there's learning in there, but there's relationship in there. There's fun in there. And we're not like, Oh, let's go up to the next thing. Let's move. Let's move. So yeah, yeah. it's been really good. It's been really good. That is good. That's good <laughs> yeah. fruit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you're headed down the right direction and, and that kind of fruit comes out, you know, uh, on reflection on our conversation. And I probably mentioned this at the time for us is, um, we were more on the, we need to move towards some more structure. Okay. <laughs> so we're, I think we're like meeting in the middle here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Because, you know, a lot of times when it was, okay, well, let's just kind of see what happens. Well, that's a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole lot of sleeping in and a whole lot, of, you know, and then you do have things that fall through the cracks and yeah. not happening. So <clears throat> we are, we are coming out of one of those seasons of um, less structure to okay. more structure. And I would say similarly, uh, that's bearing fruit, you know, and, yeah. and there's some momentum going and uh, enjoyment of learning. And so it's interesting. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that we would recommend to people that you have to figure out where you are yeah. on the spectrum. You have to yes. figure out <laughs> what's working for you and for your kids. Um but the fruit is the important thing is, yeah. is are the relationships happening? Is the spiritual yeah. growth happening? Is the learning happening? Um, yeah. And not, I guess, fighting and bad attitudes and I don't yeah. know what else. <laughs> <laughs> and to be clear, cause you know, like you were saying that learning is happening. I remember talking to um, just some parents. So I'm like, I really want my kids to like really love learning, which I think we all want. Um, but there is this place where you might have kids who honestly don't really like the work, but at least if the atmosphere is, um, I guess, peaceful, they can even do the things that you don't like. Like I have a student who she will tell you plainly, she has no favorite subjects. She doesn't really enjoy any of it, but <laughs> we have good books and we still have a good time as we're doing the work. So it's not like this magical place where all of my kids are like, oh my gosh, like I love to learn. My little kids are, but <laughs> right. you know, but it's like, okay, let's get this done and we can still do it in an enjoyable way, even if they don't enjoy the subjects themselves. So I yeah. think as you just kind of realize that over time, like, oh, it's fine. I don't like this either. Let's just do it. And then let's have some tea. <laughs> and <been> yeah, <laughs> I, I think I have one and I think it's, she's the same age as yours okay. who, isn't doesn't seem to be super interested in any of it yeah <laughs> and um but we did hit something fun and that was i i handed her a book a book for her to read okay and she loved it it was like one of the first breakthroughs <laughs> of realizing that she's really interested in something good okay and and it was interesting because I had, she had just been reading some literature, historical, you know, uh, fiction. Yeah. And just like, oh, she was really having a hard time with it. And I gave her a nonfiction, which was completely about just um, learning about herself. It, well, it's the eight great smarts and some other okay. things. And yeah. she loves keeping kids and figuring out what other people are good at and it just lit a fire and so i was thankful i was like finally we found something Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that's another good point though sometimes i think um we can get so caught up on like trying to get our kids to like love this love this love this that we don't like accept that okay 
they don't love that. And, and this is an area where, okay, they're going to learn to persevere. They're going to learn to endure. They're going to learn. You got to do things you don't like to do in this area. Yeah. I'm not going to try to force them to love this. But then we just find ways, you know, prayerfully to introduce them to things that they do love. And then those areas, they will grow. And you're like, okay, you know, and you can just have peace instead of thinking like everything has to be so fun and great for them. Because mine, she's into, if it's creative, like cooking and um, anything hospitality-like or psychology, anything real life to her, she's like, yeah, to now. But if it's from the past, if it's in the future, if it's math, if it's that, ooh, like, I, I don't care. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, but it works. So it's good. <laughs> well, and we don't, we don't want to fail to keep saying, as you just said, that all of our kids are different. They have different interests. They have different abilities. God made them differently. They have different gifts, different callings. Yes. And in fact, it really just goes with the book I mentioned yeah. um, by Kathy Cook, The Eight Great Smarts, because everybody isn't smart necessarily from an academic level that that's not their interest. And so um, just, we can continue to encourage parents to um, let the kids be, uh, have their strengths and interests. Um, And it's hard because we have our own and we kind of (laughs) assess them on that, which is not really fair. Um, Yes. So that's, I think that's freeing for parents if they can uh, really get that. Yeah. And just having that, um, you know, one thing we've been talking about at church lately, is just really uh, remembering to focus on the kingdom of God. Right. And of course, from a worldly perspective, everybody needs straight A's and we need to have this certain path. But when we open our minds up to the way the kingdom works, like God gives us all different, like you said, talents and gifts and uses us in so many different capacities that it wouldn't even make sense for all of us to have the same strengths. And so it's it really is not just it's just like a beautiful thing as a parent to look and go wow, God, like, okay, I get to shepherd over this creative child. I get to shepherd over this leader. I get to shepherd over this person who's going to be, you know, willing to serve others in this way. And then just seeing the way, like glimpses of God and and what matters to him and these different individuals, it becomes like this, I don't know, it's like a blessing. It's life-giving as a parent, as we're doing all of our, you know, our daily mundane duties. And you see those little glimpses. It's just like a beautiful thing. Yeah, so... And just to put a exclamation point on what you just said, too, is keeping the spiritual perspective is also very freeing because we could get caught a little too much into does my kid really know stuff, you know, or um, are they prepared for college or for a job or whatever we have in our minds? Um, So what I try to say when my kids ask, why are we doing this? Um, usually my answer is more along the lines of God wants to use you to be a blessing to others. And this is a part of you being ready that you have abilities. Uh, you have, uh, you're equipped to do stuff, you know, to do something. (laughs) Um, and so that's it. That's a different viewpoint to say there's a kingdom of God issue. Um, yes. And not just, I have to do my school issue. So that's pretty yeah. exciting. If you can pass yeah. that on to them. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Eternal perspective. Absolutely. Okay, now it's time for some wisdom from the word. Sometimes my 13-year-old daughter will come up to me and say, Dad, do you love me? Do you want me to be happy? And of course, I know what she's getting at. I don't know what she's about to ask me, but she's about to ask me something. Uh, Fortunately, I think my daughter knows that that's not going to work in some ways. Um, And I don't think that she really thinks that's what love is. I hope, because I'm trying to teach her otherwise. But it's really funny because that's what the world teaches about love, doesn't it? If I get what I want and if you do what I want, then you love me. Um, So just last week, of course, was Valentine's Day and uh, we're celebrating love and thinking about love. And this is an important topic. 
So not only do we know that the world is confused about love, but the reality is it's pretty hard to love people. And God calls us to love our enemies. Um, it's not easy. And so I think let's just take a minute to define what is love biblically and how do we do it? That's pretty tough. A few weeks ago, we were talking about John 15 and how Jesus is looking for fruit and our fruit is glorifying to God. One thing we can find out in John 15 is that the number one fruit that Jesus is looking for is love. Uh, John 15 uh, verse 9 says, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. And then in verse 11, These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. So as you probably know, love is not a feeling. Sometimes we use the word love as a feeling or as a desire in our culture. Um, but you probably have heard that according to scripture, uh, love is not a feeling, it's self-sacrifice for the good of another. And of course, that comes right here from John 15, 13 that we just read. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. So we know that it is personal sacrifice. And we know why would we sacrifice? Well, we would do it for the good of someone that we love. But this brings up a huge question. What is good? You know, what is happiness? Um, we know that it isn't always what the other person wants. An example of that, of course, is our children. Uh, one of my sons is always asking to play with, or more importantly, to use something dangerous. When he was very little, he always wanted to use a knife or a pocket knife. And so for a long time, I said, no, you can't do that. Eventually, I was able to give him a pocket knife. The other day, though, I had my chainsaw out. And of course, hey, dad, can I do that? Can I try that? He wasn't quite ready yet. As soon as possible, I'm going to train him and I'm going to let him do it. But it wasn't that day. And <clears throat> so we know that as parents, we don't let our kids have or do whatever they want. Let me just stop real quick and say, many parents today are letting their kids do what they want. Many parents today have bought the lie of the culture that giving your kids what they want is loving them. But you got to understand that isn't love. We know from 1 Corinthians 13 uh, verse 6, that it says, love does not rejoice with evil, but rejoices with the truth. So we know that there's truth, there's objective uh, truth. We as parents know what's good and right uh, for our kids. And we can be willing and we do have the authority uh, to say no or to say yes at the right time. So loving our kids is saying no sometimes. And so if you're struggling with that as a parent, I would encourage you uh, to be loving by saying no. Uh, and of course, you're going to say no to dangerous things, but there are a lot of things you might be saying yes to uh, when they need to know that you're in charge and that you care for them and that you know what is best for them. But back to the bigger picture, which is we are all called as we follow Jesus to love others, which means I'm going to sacrifice myself for the good of others. And I know that the good and the right is defined by scripture. Um, and that means knowing and loving Jesus. So as a parent, um, as a husband, uh, maybe as a wife, you have the opportunity to say, what would bring the greatest blessing, the greatest goodness, the greatest amount of Jesus into the lives of my family, of my neighbors, of my friends, um, at any cost? You know, what would I be willing to do to make sure they have that. And now we're talking about love, real love, uh, the love that God gives us and that we can give to others. So uh, let's, let's take this wisdom from the word and let it set the culture uh, for our homes, for our marriages, for our families, for our parenting, um, and know that one day Jesus can come to my life, to your life and look and see and find the fruit of love.
Welcome to Homeschool Helps with Amanda. I'm Amanda Wares, Homeschool Helps Director with NCHE. So today on Homeschool Helps with Amanda, we are going to talk about the February slump, or sometimes it's just the winter slump. Um, I talked about this. I did a segment on it last year at this time, and probably I will do it again next year at this time because it is a real thing. And I think a lot of people, a lot of parents, um, homeschool parents in particular, maybe think that they're the only ones that experience this, but it's just not true. It is so common. So, you know, it's winter, the weather might not be the greatest outside, the holidays, the excitement of the holidays is over. And now, you know, maybe you're feeling like I am, like you really need to get down to it and get back into the groove of schoolwork. And it seems like it's a really long time until spring break or until the summer. So whatever it is, this feeling, I kind of sometimes like to call it the winter doldrums where you just feel like blah it's common it's so so common but what can you do about it that's what i want to talk about today so i think there are quite a few things you could do um the main idea that has worked well for me is to change something change something about your routine, change something, maybe do a fun unit study or plan a field trip to break things up. Or it could be something as simple as do school in a different place in your house or go pack up all your books and go do school at the library. Um, if it's a nice day, by all means, go outside. Um, that always helps me. It helps my kids. It helps all of our mental outlook. And um, if we're having that doldrums feeling, it really does lift us to change things up a little bit. Um, also, if it always helps me, if I have something to look forward to. So even if it's planning a spring break trip or a summer vacation, even if it's looking that far ahead, it really does help me when I'm feeling like, blah, this winter is never going to end to have that to look forward to. It really does help. Um, also, another thing that has helped encourage me would be um, diving in, maybe listening to some podcasts, um, listening to the homeschool show to get some um, encouragement, information, consider it like teacher training, um, a teacher work day, what have you. That really helps me as well to move past that kind of blah feeling. Also, it's really important, I think, to differentiate between is this just the normal winter, February doldrums, or is something really not working? I think that's a difficult um, question to ask yourself. Like, is there a curriculum that you've been using that genuinely isn't working? And maybe you need to look at, oh, do we need to look at something different? Um, have you been following a certain approach to homeschooling, and maybe that's really not working. It's okay to ask yourself those hard questions um, and change things if need be. It doesn't mean that homeschooling itself is not working. It doesn't mean that, you know, you need, oh, we need to put the kids in school. That's not what it means. It could be that you need to change something. Maybe you need to look into a different approach to homeschooling. Maybe your student needs more hands-on and not so much 
book work or sit down online work. Maybe they need more one-on-one -on -one or um, maybe they need to move more, whatever it is. That's okay to examine what is really going on. But if it really is, as you look, look at yourself, think through what's really going on. Um, if it really is just that winter blah, <laughs> then it is also okay to take a day off, go on a field trip. Um, there's things that you can do to break up this long stretch of school in the winter time, especially there's things you can do to break it up and make it more um, new and exciting and enjoyable and not be so in that winter slump. Most of all, if you take nothing else away from this, I want you to know if you're feeling that winter slump, you are not alone. It is so, so normal. I really hope this helps today. Well, we really appreciate you joining us this week. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at the homeschool show at nche.com. And maybe you have a question for us. Uh, maybe you have some topics you would like for us to uh, talk about. In fact, somebody reached out to us uh, recently and said, hey, can you talk about single parent homeschooling? And so as you can tell over the last few weeks, you know, we had a couple of episodes devoted to that. Maybe there's some other topic that we're missing and that you'd like some information on. We'd love for you to let us know if this has been helpful to you. Uh, be sure you share it with your family and friends and, and other homeschoolers. And until next week, continue to homeschool with confidence and joy.